Welcome. This is the Willis Farms Maple Leaf Barn Quilt Project. Here's the tools that you're going to need. Your painter's tape, your brushes, your paint. This is mustard, Tuscan orange, fork, York red, and chocolate. Those are all fusion mineral paint. I already have the pattern done on your board for you, as you can see. The board will depend on what you decide. First, you're going to take your tape and you're going to tape off certain areas. I decided to tape off the areas for the brown. If you look at the sample pattern that is included in your kit, I'm taping off for the brown. You're going to go on the outside of the yellow mark line. Make sure that you run your finger across the paint, the painter's tape to get a really good seal on that. As you can see that I'm displaying in this tutorial. You're going to outline each block, quilt block, and you're going to outline them. Now, when you have really tight corners, you may need to use scissors. I'm not going to use scissors in this tutorial. I'm just going to um, pull up and fold, as you see right here, my painter's tape. You may want to cut and make sure that these are very um, precise um, lines. It is up to your personal preference. Just make sure that you are sealing the edges of the painter's tape. That's going to make you most successful um, with your project. And as you can see, I am just folding um, the painter's tape instead of cutting. And like I said, you can cut if you prefer. But you're going to outline. Um, in step one, you're going to outline all the brown. I'm going to show you in this video how to do um, with painter's tape. And I'm also going to show you freehand paint. It's your personal preference. If you are very um, precise and like nice crisp lines, you're going to want to tape off your edges. If you like a more natural rustic look, you may enjoy um, the process of freehand um, painting. So as you can see, I am using very precise, um, just putting pieces of tape in there, very small pieces of tape and filling them into the pieces and just folding along my lines. I'm an artist, so I always have paint on my hands. As you can see, I have the Tuscan orange on my hands. In this tutorial, I did not tape off um, the middle block. Um, when I did the red, you'll see that in the future. Um, just to show you that you do not have to commit to the whole entire project. Um, taping off that you can go back and forth in between taping off and freehand. It is your personal preference. So that middle block is going to be red, the Fort York red. So here we have the brown as I'm displaying right there. Now you're going to take your brush and the important part of this is just not to use a fully loaded brush. You want a more dry brush. You also, right there, if you do um, not go over your tape, you have a higher chance of actually getting bleeds. So you're going to want to make sure that you're painting half and half. So if you've noticed right there, half the brush is on the painter's tape and half the brush is on the project. That will ensure that it seals and you have less bleeds on your project. Now, if you want these... Um, you're going to need to provide your own brushes um, in the kit if you want a broader brush. You can also use foam brushes um, in this process. I just prefer to use the bristle brushes my, myself, but it's a personal preference. And you're just going to brush the outline first, and then you're going to fill in your paint color. I am doing um, autumn traditional autumn colors for this project, but feel free um, to um, adapt the colors to your personal preference. The pattern books do have different color selections that you can choose from. I do a one coat 
and wait for the project to dry. If you have a hair dryer and you want to speed up the process, you just need to blow dry it and that makes it um, the process go a lot quicker. Here's step two. I'm going to freehand it and I'm going to do the yellow, um, the tip of the maple leaf. All I am doing is outlining and the best thing is, is just to get your point of your brush fully loaded and you're going to pull the paint. You're not going to, um, this is like pushing and pulling. So you're going to just make sure that your brush tip is loaded and you're going to pull it along your um, outline. As you can see here, I am just pulling that paint along the outline. You do not want your brush to be too loaded um, as it's hard to control the paint. But if you can see right here, I am just going along my outline. And the success of this is to make sure that your elbow and your hand, your arm is um, grounded into something. So ground your elbow. It's kind of hard to see in this video because you can't see my elbow. But I have my elbow firmly planted um, against my body. And that helps you stabilize and make it easier to um, just have a steady hand and to paint straight lines if you have your elbow um, grounded. So, and then you outline it first and then fill in the rest of the quilt block. This color is mustard. Uh, so I'm just gonna fill in and you'll see filling in the rest of that quilt block. And as you notice, part of it is not outlined I will um, show you where you're just going to very quickly go, not quickly, sorry. You're going to very quick, carefully take the tip of your brush and go to the point and pull the paint and to fill in the rest. Now, if you want to make sure that you have a very crisp line and free um, handing makes you nervous, that's totally fine. You can also tape off this part as well. I just wanted to give an example of doing both. I prefer freehanding, but that's um, not for everyone. So feel free to tape off as I showed you in the example of the brown. So we're just filling that in and all of these layers are going to get a second coat. So that's the second one. I always, and now we're just checking to see if it's dry. If the pro paint feels warm, it's dry. If it feels cold, um, then it's still wet. I was just making sure um, by peeling that up that um, there wasn't any paint runs. I, I just do that. So we're going over the brown again for my second coat. This video is um, sped up, so this is an actual real speed of me doing this. it This process, the whole entire thing took me 30 minutes. So being new, give yourself some time, give yourself some grace um, of going over this process and enjoy it. Enjoy the process as you're painting because creativity is relaxing and it's just something to take some time for yourself. So I'm just adding a second coat of chocolate onto this. And then after this, you will notice um, that I'm going to use a hair dryer, not a camera, um, but I'm just going to use a hair dryer to um, speed up the drying process. So there I used a hair dryer and we are going to remove the tape. And so the nice crisp lines. And on this one, you can see a little bit of a bleed um, because if you remember, I did not purposely, um, did not go over my tape and my pattern piece because I wanted you to see um, that you will have a few bleeds um, if you do not do that process, but I will show you how to correct it at the end of this video, um, just in case that happens to you. So now we're going to go and do the second, and this is you have to make sure that your first coat is completely dry. Hair dryers are wonderful um, to help speed up the drying process, and we're going to do our fork York red right now. So I am just taping off the next step. It's an also important for this to make sure that if you tape over a previously painted surface, 
that you make sure that it's completely dry because if there's any wet under that, it will pull your paint up. So once again, instead of cutting, which if you feel more comfortable, you can cut this, I am just folding. You're just going to follow those yellow lines and on your surface um, for the taping. And you can tape over tape. So that is what I'm doing here. And then I'm just going to rip that off. And then um, I actually leave part of this block open so I can show you free handing um, up against another paint color. So the area next to the brown, I purposely left open so I can show you free handing on that. But we're gonna go and use our brush again and use paint those three. Um, actually it's five blocks. So you're gonna do half over the tape and half on your pattern. Now be very careful when you get to, um, if you do what I wanted, what I'm doing, if you're going to freehand next to another paint color, um, just make sure that you're very careful with um, that. So this is what you're going to do. You're just going to pull your paint up against that and you're basically placing the tip of your brush up against the, um, the other color. So the tip of your brush is going to go to the corner um, of your previously painted color. And then just continue um, to paint your block in. I like to do um, longer strokes and this also will have a second coat. Um, but I like to do longer strokes and pulling. And then when I get closer to the edge, I just um, like to do longer strokes. So it has a long, uh, broader coverage. And now I'm going to go over painting near um, that center block right there. We're going to do the tape parts first. And you're going to do half over the tape and then half over your project. And then I'm going to show you once again um, painting near that. So if you see my tip of my brush is very close to that chocolate brown and I am just pulling the paint. You're not going to want to dab. You're really going to want to pull the paint across. So that's the trick is just getting as close as you can. Um, it actually does texture up a little bit, so it kind of helps you with that line and you're just going to pull as you can see right there and then just fill it in with your paint and reds like this red the um, Fort York red always needs a second coat so if you see it and it looks streaky um, don't worry about that because you're just going to go over it with a second coat and I also blow dried this so there's my pause and there it is blow dried and the tape already off. Here's step three and I'm just going to freehand this um, to show you. Feel free to use the tape if you like. I decided I just wanted to show you freehand um, pulling that tip of that brush close to the other color, the yellow, I'm sorry, excuse me, the um, Fort York red and you're just going to get your tip as close as you can. And if you can see that red is bled a little bit, but don't worry about that because you're going to use your um, Tuscan orange and just pull right over that. So it um, corrects that bleed very well. So we're just going to um, 
finish this out. And when I come to the tip, you're going to just paint with the very tip of your brush. And I will show you in a minute how I do that. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, I like to outline my large areas and then go back to my detail areas. But whatever you feel most comfortable with, I have found it's easier um, just to do the large areas and then go to detail areas. So you're going to do the very tip and then you're going to um, wipe off a little bit so you don't have too much. And that way you can just get very detailed in that corner piece right there. If you want, make sure, don't feel hesitate. You can tape these areas. Um, it is up to you. So if you want to make sure that it's nice and crisp and you don't feel that you have a steady enough hand, by all means, tape off. That's absolutely, totally fine. This is your project and I want you to enjoy it and have the most fun that you possibly can creating it. These are wood surfaces. Um, so there are going to be some beauty marks that I like to call. As you can see, um, this one does have a knot in it. Um, so all of my surfaces are made um, out of a natural product, wood. And then the top of the surface is painted with a fusion mineral paint. Um, it depends on the project. This one is painted with um, fusion mineral paint casement. And that seals the surface and allows for a solid surface. but any wood surface, since it is porous, it is going to saturate in the wood. Um, so the wood is going to take different um, to each product project. So we're just outlining right here. I'm showing you different methods. If you want to make sure that you do the outline on the outside first, um, it is your personal preference. So I'm outlining the whole project and then I will go back and paint the interior of this. But it it's absolutely your preference. If you feel like you're going to get your hand in the, um, in the paint, just make sure that um, you're painting in to out. And that makes it easier to keep your hand clean and not um, dab your hand in the paint and then transfer it to your project. Fusion has a good open time, um, so you can um, manipulate it, but depending on the humidity of where you are painting, if it is very dry in your house, it will um, dry quicker. If it's very humid in your house, it will actually dry slower. So it's the humidity. Now we're going to clean that up a little bit. I just have a little bit of casement and we're just going to use the very tip of our brush and we are going to slide that along that brown and just clean up those edges. So literally just sliding the tip of my brush along the chocolate brown and we're just cleaning up those edges a little bit. This is also personal preference. You do not have to do this if you do not feel it's necessary. Um, if you want it super clean, by all means, you can tape off again um, and then repaint over the, the white to make sure you have a clean, crisp line, but don't feel like you have to. And I'm just going over a few more of my edges um, to clean them up a little bit. And it's literally just your painting with the tip of your brush. And here's the finished product. Thank you.